This is a Teak Cavalry Secretary campaign chest by the Army and Navy store. And for modern use, the cavalry campaign chest design is probably the most practical. A lot of campaign chests are Victorian. Uh, the secretaire drawer is at a height that you would stand at, whereas a cavalry chest, it was very much designed for sitting at it. So let's have a look at that secretaire and show you how it works. So we pull out this drawer here, and that extends. And you can see we've got a nice writing surface there in a uh, tooled leather with a coromandel surround to it. We can lift that up, it's hinged. And then behind it, we've got a stationary rack to keep all of our papers. So very nice and neat. We've got storage well to the side there. And we've got another one here. Uh, which we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at um, in a minute. Now, uh, the cavalry chest was a very popular design of, uh, of campaign chest. Most of them that you see are by the Army and Navy store. They made them uh, not only in teak, but they're also available in oak and mahogany. And you could also get them with a superstructure with shells and sometimes a mirror. And I believe, although we haven't had one yet, that they also sold what they called a plain cavalry chest, which would suggest it didn't have a secretaire drawer. It was all uh, plain storage drawers. The lock is by Hobbs, so a good maker. And it's also dated 1819, which is um, very useful for us. Um, now, the cavalry chest has got a secret drawer to it, and I'm just going to bring the camera in um, now so that uh, you can have a closer look at how that works. So before we show you the secret drawer, while we're here, let's have a look at the label. So that's a fairly typical place for the Army and Navy to put, uh, Navy CSL to put their little ivory maker's plaque, top right hand drawer, first place we normally look if we uh, see a chest and it looks like it's the style of the Army and Navy store. Right, now if we open this, we can see that we've got a little desk tidy area here. We've got a pen tray which lifts out, but there is a dead space there that uh, we can't get to. So that suggests there's gonna be some sort of secret drawer there. So let's lift up the writing area now in here we've got another compartment with a lid and if you look at that handle there that's fairly typical of the army and navy store to use that little gothic revival handle um, so another point of the maker and just here there is a very neatly disguised button um, if you wouldn't know that it was there you probably wouldn't find it now if we push that So even in slow motion, that came flying out quite fast. And we can see here that we've got the fascia board for the secret drawer. And if we reach in with our fingers, we can pull out a little blue velvet lined drawer where we can hide our medals, our love notes, or our money. So, Let's pop that back in there, fix that back, nice clicking sound. And show you one last little bit of evidence that it's the Army and Navy store. Now, if we remove this top left hand drawer, we can see here stamped of a secondary wood um, a model number 19127 and that type of numbering was fairly typical of the army and navy store so uh, this is a very nice example of a cavalry chest um, it also stands out for being a little bit larger than most 
the standard size of a campaign chest in the latter part of the 19th century was three foot six. This is uh, three foot nine, it's three inches wider than most. Um, so it stands out a little bit for that. We don't see many of this size. It's a very well made chest. Um, Army and Navy store were great uh, at, at uh, making campaign furniture. Very formulaic, but very practical, worked very well. Good brass handles, good maker's uh, label. Always nice to have a secret drawer. And as we started off talking about uh, the secretaire that you can actually sit at to work for modern use makes it a very, very popular design of campaign chest. So um, English, made of teak, circa 1890.